Hello everyone and <clears throat> welcome to What Is Your Mod? Um, today we are going to be looking at uh, Panzer Corps 2 instead of Order of Battle. If you saw the early schedule it said Order of Battle but um, uh, the thing that we wanted to show you uh, it just wasn't quite ready. So we're going to have another look at Panzer Corps 2 and today I have with me Grondel who is the mind behind the uh, grand campaign from Panzer Corps 1 being imported into Panzer Corps 2, which is kind of an interesting thing to want to do. So, uh, Grondel, please explain yourself. <laughs> why Why did you want to do this? Uh, I, I, I don't understand. Uh, main reason was um, I really liked the uh, Panzer Corps 1 and all the campaigns and all, but I liked several mechanics of Panzer Corps to more and Pentacle 2 is just way more beautiful than Pentacle 1. Oh, is, that's controversial. Which is the main reason why. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, there are a lot of people who think that the uh, the pixel art in Pentacle 1 has its own timeless charm. You're not one of those? Uh, no, I definitely prefer Pentacle 2 optics, the uh, 3D environment over the um, the Pentacle 1. And uh, especially the, the, the map um, editor is very, very good in Panzerco 2. And it's not even close to what it can do. And what we've seen so far in, in uh, Panzerco 2 and in the campaigns is you can do maps in theory with the engine that are 21,000 hexes big. That's like 150 times 150 hexes. Um, I opened such a map one time with my own computer <laughs> and it took like one and a half hour to just render the map and open it. <laughs> yeah, I remember I did this once. Uh, I did I did a video a while ago about the Panzer Corps 2 editor and uh, someone asked me, oh, how big can you make the map? And you know, you can just adjust it on the fly in the editor. So we started putting numbers in. And uh, after we got like several thousand wide and several thousand tall, my graphics card at the time just started crying for mercy. So we had to stop. But there, I mean, there's no limit. As far as I know, the limit is your computer hardware. So that is quite cool. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I think we are going to see a, a lot more stuff for this engine. Maybe not in, in Panzerka 2, but this engine is going to be big. Cool. You know, if you'd have said to me that the reason why you wanted to move away from Panzer Corps One was to get rid of the uh, rugged defense mechanic, I would have, uh, I would have fully understood. <laughs> uh, the uh, rugged defense mechanic is actually in Panzer Corps Two as well. It's just turned off at the moment, but you could turn it on. No, <laughs> please no. <laughs> uh, for those of you who have never played Panzer Corps One, there was a. I almost say like it's an anti-critical. You know, in most games, you get critical hits, you do loads of extra damage. With rugged defense was like an anti-critical. You did no damage and took, you know, just a truckload of abuse that you wouldn't have taken. And it was always horrendous when, uh, you know, you you had like some group of tanks or something taking on a a unit that is not that threatening normally and then it's like rugged defense and your your tanks get wrecked and you're like ah <laughs> but if i remember correctly that could only happen if the attack unit was stuck in yes yeah it had to um <clears throat> it had to have some uh it needed level some, of some kind of positive, kind of positive entrenchment. And I think the higher the entrenchment level, the higher the chances for the rack defense, if I remember correctly. Yes, but it, it could, I think it could just happen if the unit was in a mountain or a hill, uh, like an, or, an already good piece of terrain. I don't remember the mechanic exactly. I just remember the frustration of it. Um, it's funny actually because the actual Panzer Corps Two manual is like one of the first things it mentions is that there's no rugged defense. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the most controversial feature of Panzer Corps One. <clears throat> it is uh, in in Panzer Corps Two as well, but it, it's turned off. I'm not sure what happens if you turn it on. It might, might uh, break the game because it's uh, not developed to the end or something like that. Okay. Well, anyway. Um, 
we, we I think we're going to do some reminiscing on this stream because obviously this mod is a an homage to Panzer Corps One. Um, but let's get into installing it quickly. Uh, so it's pretty simple actually. Just bring up the uh, the Grand Campaign mod on the workshop. You can search for it if you want. Um, you can also get to this from inside the game. I'll uh, I'll show you how to do that. Just click the subscribe button, which I've already done. Very, very simple. And then uh, once you've subscribed, fire up Panzer Corps 2. And then we just have to enable the mod in the, uh, in the menu, which I'm going to do now. So here's your, here's my Panzer Corps 2. Go to the mod section. Mod Manager, add the Grand Campaign mod, apply. And you don't have to restart the game, but I always restart the game after enabling mods, just for safety. Call it an old superstitious habit, but... <clears throat> if the background pictures are changed by the mod, this is only going to show if you uh, restart the game. Oh, well, there you go. I always restart games when I enable mods because I've just I've just experienced too much weirdness in too many games across you know across all different companies you know from 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 BattleTech to Fallout to you know Slytherin titles like Order of Battle and Panzer Corps 2 I've just seen too much weirdness where you have an in-game mod mod manager and you enable the mods and then you just play and it some, something goes wrong or goes weird and then you restart the game and it works perfectly so now I just restart the game all games <clears throat> that's just a bit of general modding advice I think because you know <clears throat> I want people to really appreciate this but mods are made by people like Grondel here community members volunteers enthusiasts spending their own time working on it they don't have the benefit of a Q&A team they don't have the benefit of you know technical expert support from the developer a lot of the time um and so you know weird things can happen and so it's best to just minimize potential problems by following all the steps even if they don't they don't seem to matter or or you know you wouldn't think that they matter it's you know it's better to uh to be careful anyway <clears throat> Let's go. New game. New campaign. So. This is it down here, right? Panzer Corps 1. Panzer Corps 1, yeah, exactly. Oh, we got some I battle. Think, I think we have a short delay, like two or three seconds between the stream and Discord. Okay. I mean, that's fine. It's, you know, I'll, uh, I'll uh, try and allow some pauses for you to respond. <clears throat> okay. So what we have here is uh should I should I start with the prelude or should I skip to nineteen thirty nine? You recommend you, everyone plays the prelude? You have to play the preludes or you don't have a core. Ah. Which you can import to thirty nine. You can import the, the uh the core from the first campaign into the next. Uh nineteen forty can go to Africa core or nineteen forty one. And in uh, 42 and the Africa Core, you have the, um, the option to go to a non-historic, which is um, marked with an NH at the back of the campaign. Glorious. I'm just lowering the RNG because... I always play down at uh, like 10, 20%, something like that. <clears throat> I'm just, I'm cursed, so... All right. So do I click start basic training or do I click proceed? Doesn't matter. They'll both lead to the same result. All the roads lead to Rome. Okay. I believe in uh, Storm Over Europe you had to press one and not the other. Otherwise yeah. it went funny. I I already told them how to fix it. <clears throat> oh, cool. <laughs> Give them the... Um, the uh, Grand Campaign remake was actually started by Rick and Ezekiel like uh, two or three years ago. I wanted to do the same and noticed, oh, there's some people already doing it. That's why I joined. And then they moved on to Storm Over Europe and I stayed with the uh, Grand Campaign. 
All right. Greetings, O Best. <clears throat> this is your training area. Bring forces as you see fit. We suggest to bring at least three infantry, two tanks. This is infantry written in the German style, and two artillery. We will not need any air defense for this training. The task at hand is beating all enemy units and to take two of their camps. Enemy units will be marked red. <clears throat> Training partner has been advised to remain mostly passive and not hinder your tactical movements. On a side note, one of the tank commanders of your training partner is a little hot-headed, so be aware of that. Good luck with your exercise. Let me tell you, as a fat nerd, I am not very good at exercise. <laughs> hey, Zero Slot. Yeah, do you know what? This is this hero is like. Many people would consider this to be one of the best heroes there is, and it is a very good hero. Um, <clears throat> but it doesn't necessarily increase the power of a unit, if you know what I mean. Highly depends on the unit you put it on. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes. I just I don't want more units. I want actually powerful units. If you know what I mean. Yeah, like this much, is why I favor. Zero slot is is annoying, yeah. But uh, <clears throat> every consolidator needs a zero slot hero. Yes. <laughs> if you if you have consolidator, then zero slots is amazing, of course. But uh, what I mean is like I favor things like butcher, tank killer, um, rapid fire one point five x, and so on, because they are very powerful when used correctly. There is uh, currently a, oh. a threat in the Slytherin forum and in the um, Steam forum uh, concerning the heroes that I put there um, because I've created a hero script that takes away the randomness a bit. You will notice this at the uh, start of the um, second scenario. It's, uh, at the moment, <laughs> only in the preloads in place. Yeah, another one. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I've got aggressive counterattack in two zero slots. Okay. Definitely a good start. Oh, whatever um, you say, game. <laughs> so the the, uh, the random heroes you get at the start of the scenario do no longer exist, you, but you can buy a hero um, ah. out of certain categories. So I'll, we'll talk about that at the start of the second uh, scenario a, a bit more. Um, if you take a look at the Grenadiers, they're a little bit changed. Okay, what's different about them? They have uh, two traits. They don't new normally have. They have rapid fire one point five x, and ferocious defense. Exactly, and the uh, normal wear infantry is reduced to two slots instead of three. This is the uh, nerf pioneers by buffing the other two units strategy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because. Because everybody spams pioneers, right? This is yeah. this is the reason why yeah. I did the uh, the limited units thing. Yeah. Um, did you uh, read the um, uh, the suggestion I made for the limited units? Because it's it's uh, a, a yes. great feature. I always play with limited units when I play. But if you <clears throat> edit a factor, Fa a factor um, for infantry, yeah. It's 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 been no, passed no, no. on. I'm not... Not, not, not a factor for infantry. A, a factor uh, that takes into account the prestige cost of a unit. Like um, you, you um, take the prestige cost of the unit and divide it by 400. Then you will get more units for uh, the cheapest, like infantry. You get a lot more than the, uh, uh, the set amount. And for the, the really expensive units like Tiger Tanks and stuff, you get like four or five per scenario only. That's way more uh, realistic then. Yeah, it's there have been lots of suggestions about adjusting it for either per category or uh, by some other factor. Per category seems like the easier way of doing it, but uh, it's not um, it's not come to pass just yet. So yeah, I'm uh, currently working on a limited edition of the mod. Um, where I put exactly that formula into place and the uh, player gets a limited stock that is adjusted by the prestige cost of the units and you can uh, modify the number you get with the limited stock feature that comes with the game. Um, the 7.5 centimeter is modified. Okay, 
What's what's changed? I want it has forced much. I, I wanted to give it fast deployment, but sadly, fast deployment will only work as a hero trait and not as a unit trait. Um, that's why I ended up with forced march. All right, <clears throat> probably still not useful, but <laughs> you know. it's very useful. All right, well, I'm gonna stick with 15 centimeter because it's all I know. Uh, oh, you have two zero slots, of course you go with 50 centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and just as soon as I figure out... I need to move them to the reserve because I have to actually buy the unit first, if you know what I mean. Feel my zero slots. Okay, let's add some. Let's add some cheapo infantry, shall we? Okay, that'll do for now. <clears throat> I love my overstrength. I'm just I can't I can't help myself. Oh yeah, I aggressive don't think attack. I don't think you're going to run into any huge difficulty in here. The reason for the um, reloads was um, for me to test what can be done, what can I mod. It was like the first thing ever I did for Panzer Corps two. And I used the maps that were used in the Panzer Corps 1 um, tutorial um, to create this one. And it came out pretty nicely, so I decided to put it just in front of 39. Yeah, cool. These poor guys, you know, they're not going to know what hit them. You know what, I could have literally just bought a load of uh, recon cars and actually just farm these guys for prestige, but anyway. Uh, uh, correct? Sorry? The, the, the difficulty level. The difficulty level is uh, generalismus, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I changed something with the last update to ease the pain of the players starting on uh, in generalism a bit because you have to buy all new units in the, all four maps um, by, except the last map then uh, probably all you have uh, the last map. Um, I took away prestige from the starting prestige and um, added prestige to the um, to the hexes that you capture so the generalismus players have uh, more prestige should ah. not affect the other difficulty levels. <clears throat> Oof. Going to <laughs> Man, that guy got wrecked. Now that unit is set to uh, two hundred percent aggressiveness. Yeah. Let me just um. Let me just lower the uh, the sound effects because they they drown you out for me. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I'm sure it sounds fine on the stream, but uh, I I want to hear what you have to say. So. It 
it's interesting to see someone else play. Because that's one of the, the, the big issues I have. I'm not able to play a map without foreknowledge. Really? How, how would I do that? I created it, so... <laughs> oh, right, I see what you mean. <laughs> I, I can only play it in the way it is intended to be played. I can stray off the curse. Ah, oh, there's no deployment zones after you have started. Nope. Okay. You have to capture it. That's fine. That's totally fine. It is acceptable. Now, my question is here, can I capture that artillery? See your core slots, but if you put down the uh, newly purchased unit, well, my issue is I didn't actually bring along. I didn't get any of the capture traits, you know, like uh, perimeter control or. Uh... You you shouldn't <clears throat> run into any issues with uh, prestige. Like the uh, victory hexes here are two hundred, and I think the others are one hundred. Which... I mean, I've got like 20 turns here, so I've got all the time in the world, I guess. Yeah, I didn't want to press the, uh, the player in the in the first scenario in any way, because... I mean, it's a tutorial, right? This, this exactly. is what I've said to people. Um, <clears throat> whatever difficulty the player chooses, right, the game should be easy at the beginning moderately difficult in the middle and hard at the end right yeah, so even thanks. if they're playing on the easiest difficulty that should just mean that the game is really easy easy and then just sort of like you know averagely difficult towards the very end and if they're playing on super hard it should still be relatively easy at the start then hard in the middle and then like you know supreme challenge in the in the game at the end game <clears throat> you know there's a there's a curve, a, a curve that a game should have. And the funny thing is, there are so many games where the beginning of the game is the hardest part of the game. Yes. It drives me mental. Uh, XCOM is the prime offender for this. XCOM was uh, very annoying at, at the start. It's like, uh, save, reload, save, reload, save, reload. <laughs> <coughs> wow, no, that's just because you're bad. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Not to sugarcoat it here, but don't say it reload <laughs> constantly. <laughs> You're better than that, man. Come on. <laughs> <clears throat> but it is true that the beginning of that game is, is the absolute hardest bit. Once you get established and you've got the, the correct tools and all that kind of stuff, the game gets a lot easier, no matter what difficulty you're on. Exactly. If you lose uh, one soldier in like the first four or five missions... Yeah, it, it it really hurts you. Too yeah. big, too big a loss. You can can't really come back from that. Ah, uh, I can't actually support that, or can I?
<clears throat> I feel like I've made a mistake here already, but hey. <clears throat> Why? Uh, because I've not interdicted these guys correctly, so they could force march their way around and get my artillery, I think. They definitely will. You have still one infantry able to move. Ah, uh, yeah, but it's heavy, so it can't get there. It's not fast enough. I don't normally use heavy infantry. I was thinking that it was uh, a normal infantry that I would normally use, and thus it would have one more movement point. <clears throat> it's fine. It's not fine, but it'll be okay. Oh, I didn't do anything. I might not be able to see. That infantry back there might be set to not move. <clears throat> I'm not 100% sure. They don't move if they can't see. He, he hasn't got enough sight range to see that artillery, so he doesn't know it's there. Blind he is. If see this, he does not. It's interesting to see how different people play. Like this, uh, this city, I would never have had done it this way. I would have uh, brought in the second artillery and shelled that infantry until it took maybe one of my infantry units when I attacked. I play very aggressively because I play some very, very hard maps. So I understand what you mean, though. With, with 20 turns, this could definitely be done a lot more patiently. Um... This is a bridge trap, but I don't know. I don't think the AI will go for it. <clears throat> a bridge trap is where you put a soft unit next to a bridge, and then you back it up with artillery, and then an enemy unit moves in to go after the artillery, and your artillery responds, which suppresses them a lot, which means they don't really do very much damage, and the bridge reduces their attack power by minus five, so they end up doing almost nothing, and then they're just really they're sat sure. on the bridge. Their attack <laughs> power is not reduced. Uh, it should be by five. Uh, if you uh, move the mouse over the, it's uh, the attacking unit gets more attack and more defense. Ah, right, yes, but yeah, <clears throat> if your defense goes up by five, by four, or five, then their attack has effectively gone down by the same amount. If that makes sense to you. Know what you're trying to say, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a bit <laughs> Well, it works. That's all I can say. Well, normally it works, but not today. It doesn't look like the AI wants to move, so that's fine. Um, I'm pretty sure that most infantry units on this map are just sitting. They're just waiting for me to put them out of their misery. Yeah, I think the the uh, the one on the um, on the second uh, city, the, one that has the, uh, the victory hex. I'm pretty sure that that's that one can move if it wants to. What is the objective for this mission? Um, top left. Ah, oh, destroy all. Kill, kill everything. Yeah. Kill all the things. The only problem is that if you kill all the things, you will not uh, get all the cities, right? Yes. Unless you push them out. I'll do it like that. So we got two guys up here, which I need to deal with. Mm, yeah, 
so there's no path around that way. Could you open the combat lock and check the artillery attacking the um, the infantry in the city? Uh, this one. I'm happy to feed your <laughs> curiosity. Check, check. Uh, you did in vulnerable position. The artillery was standing on a bridge, and it gets the uh, the negative. Yeah. Like like the the, the infantry got the uh, defense bonus because the artillery was standing on the bridge. Correct. That's what I meant. <laughs> <clears throat> Don't be on the bridge. That's that's. <laughs> that's just you see what i mean it's it's uh, bridge bed that's what i mean by you know the bridge trap is just amazing because they they move there and they just they lose their ability to be to attack properly i'm going going to make a scenario just for you with every enemy unit having uh river assault oh god <laughs> do you know what that's just as painful as getting river assault given to you when you when you get your hero <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who don't know i did a big long youtube campaign where i i'm playing the whole access operations series and uh the first two the spanish civil war and, and 1939 i had nothing but absolutely diabolical heroes it was it was impressive how bad they were Hero script I'm going to implement maybe next, so maybe the the update after that. Um, trying to address with the, the absolute randomness of uh, heroes currently in the game, so that you have um, like a maximum of heroes you can get of one hero type, so you don't end up with 21 lethal attacks or something like that. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> them in categories, so you have. Uh, Weak, mediocre, and strong heroes, and that's currently being discussed in the forum. Uh, which hero should belong in which category? That's cool. I mean, I actually, uh, if you want, if you want my thoughts, I, I actually did a video where I rated every hero in the game from uh, and every ability from S to F. I did yeah. one of those dreaded exactly. tier videos. Um. <clears throat> but I, I have some slightly different opinions on certain heroes compared to the forums. Five players, 27 opinions, roughly. <coughs> yes. <laughs> so, before I continue, actually, is this is this more like Panzer Corps 1, where winning fast is actually very valuable? Because winning fast is not valuable in Panzer Corps 2 compared to uh, the Panzer Corps 1. That is not correct. When you win fast in Panzer Corps 2, you get a bonus. And that bonus is higher the more turns are left. That is correct. However, and, that bonus is it, never worth taking the time to avoid casualties in Panzer that, Corps 2. A given, yeah. <clears throat> Avoiding casualties in Panzer Corps 2 is definitely better than rushing and taking casualties. Because you don't get, uh, uh, especially late war when units are really, really expensive. Yeah, and in the Axis Operations um, DLC, that bonus is is very is very mute compared to city captures. And if you play on the hardest difficulty as I do, that bonus is more or less wiped out. So, actually. <laughs> It's That's it's dependent. really not important in Panzer Corps 2 at all unless you're playing on easy and you're playing the original campaign. Um, what is not taken into account, and this is the, the number of your famous and legendary heroes, because the prestige they gener generate until the um, end of the map is applied with that bonus as well. Yep, that's true, but... Um... The per turn, the per turn prestige is adjusted by difficulty. So on the hardest difficulty, it's like twenty percent, I think. It's reduced by eighty percent. Yes. Yeah. 
so it's it's not very valuable compared to using the turns to like for example surround units and capture them yeah so the higher the difficulty the more punishing is when you play fast <clears throat> But in Panzer Corps 1, the bonuses for decisive victories were, were high. They, they were worth they were worth your effort. In uh, 1943 Fictional, I implemented um, a system roughly like decisive victories in Panzer Corps 1. Um, when you um, just normally win the scenario, you would just go the normal scenario pass. But when you do the objectives, you get a different scenario pass automatically where you can do um, other maps and higher value targets and stuff like that. <clears throat> I'd almost and be tempted to sit here and just pound this guy repeatedly <laughs> for experience points because he seems to keep on healing. But I'll put him out of his misery. I think the uh, maximum experience is one star in the preloads so not not really needed to farm this poor guy he doesn't want to die <clears throat> we got him, boys. Okay, now you <clears throat> can see the hero script for the first time. Cannibal, cannibal clown. That is just gross. <laughs> you should feel bad for for making that joke. And your ancestors should feel bad, and their ancestors should feel bad. <laughs> and you know why. Don't say why. You know why. I'm I'm a moderator, man. The things I have seen. <laughs> that's oh. very very com polite compared <laughs> no, to just, what I've just, seen so far. <laughs> that's it. Let's just let's just not say any more about that. <laughs> All right, your your task this time is to breach heavily entrenched units here, here, and here. To help with that, you have been assigned two heavy mortar units. Those aren't mortars; they're uh... twenty-one centimeter. Is twenty-one water. centimeter guns. <laughs> That's about as far from mortars as you could get. That thing is called a mortar in German, Börse. Oh, I see. 21 cm Mörser is uh, the correct name of the gun. Hi, General. We need to promote an officer for a thousand prestige. Ah, you only have one thousand. Is that correct? No, I've got two thousand one hundred and seventy-two. Yeah, if you have uh, one thousand or more, you get one officer. If uh, you can uh, get a weak officer, if you have three thousand or more. You get a, can choose between a weak and a mediocre one, and if you have 5,000 and more, you can choose between a weak, a mediocre, and a strong hero. Okay. Um, when does that option pop up? After deployment? It should have popped up already, unless there's uh, something wrong with this script. Can you check if you got a hero and it was just set to silent? Just try to, to assign heroes if you have a hero somewhere. You need to... Um, Take one of your units. Nope, I don't see any extra nope. heroes. Just the three then I started the with. script is broken. I'll take a look at that later. Okay, what should I buy? Maybe I spent too much money. I could have told you in advance that it's a good idea to save some money. You could have, but it's okay. <laughs> actually, before I go buying strat bombers, do we actually have strategic airports? 
Yes, I do have a strategic airport. Ah, decisions, decisions. To be honest, I'm just... When I start campaigns, I buy rubbish strat bombers just to start training them because... They, as a unit, they take forever to train. And so you want to start early. Uh, I always have two of those. Those 17. And of course a recon plane. My my recon planes never survive my campaigns. It's uh It's uh it's just a it's just a thing. <laughs> I, I, I I I carefully I carefully steward every unit through the campaign from beginning to end, being careful to lose nothing except my recon planes which just get thrown to the wolves every turn. <laughs> They're just too cheap. It's like 80 prestige or something like that. Yeah, for, for it's not 12. even that, it's 50. I always put them up to 12 because they uh, still are one slot at 12. Oh, yes, me too, actually. But it's only 60 at 12. But yeah, 50 base. Okay, issue has been found and solved. Will be repaired with the next update. Look at that! I'm helping you bug test at the same time. That's like the 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 most annoying thing when when modding. You need like four to five people who just play the mod and report back to you when they run into anything and any issue. It's impossible for one person to test everything that is possible to do. Like in that script, you have like a, a gazillion options that can happen. Yep. And obviously, I did not test the option that someone has more than 1,000 but less than 3,000 prestige. Wow. That's just shocking, isn't it? How could you? How could you? How could you? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You know, it. it it's uh as you know modders have just you've done all this hard work it's uh and we will um provide links to discord and the their the steam workshop page and so on you know please please do play these mods and give feedback to uh grundle or you know whichever mods you play you know please do give your feedback because these guys you know they put a lot of effort in but they don't have the time to be as thorough with testing as they would like to be. So, yeah, I currently have two people who are like dedicated testers um, who then uh, play whenever they want to play and report back, like give feedback on balance and stuff like that. And I'm always looking for more. So anyone who's interested, just contact me and we talk about it. Feeling like a bit short on uh, slots. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, um, why. one thing I just remembered: the uh, 3.7 centimeters uh, anti-tank guns are modified too. They have uh, camouflage. Every um, 3.5 or th every um, anti-tank gun below four centimeters caliber has camouflage in the mod. Ah, right. Sorry. My brain has melted. I'm like, why are my slots full? Because I've got everything in the deployment panel. Oh, here we go. Oh, spare experimental tank, and I'm willing to part with it for some resources. 
sure. What's the tank? What have I just been given? It's going to arrive on turn three, turn two, something like that. Ah, ah. Right, let's go, scout plane. Do you know what? This mission reminds me of uh, one of the early missions from Panzer General. The map is taken from the tutorial of uh, Panzer Corps 1. No, I know that, but I'm just feeling the nostalgia. Encirclement commence. <clears throat> okay, I've got this guy pinned. Okay, there we go. Aggressive little move out here. My plan is to just take this camp out here, then go up here, and then go across here. Simple. You should have enough time to do whatever you want. My tank has arrived. Yeah, sadly, those pop-ups can't be set to just pop up when you're turn begins. It's like the, the script in the background runs complete, but the graphics that are triggered by the scripts are not stellar. That's why the pop-ups of the beginning of your turn are always shown in the enemy turn or during the enemy turn. I see. Sadly, I haven't found a way to work around that yet. <clears throat> if these guys would leave their fortifications or not. If they are entrenched. If they are entrenched what, sir? If they are entrenched, they usually stay put. Usually. got this guy in a pin. Now I'm going to uh, make him surrender. Okay. Hi, Krenak. What language is that? Uh, that's 
orcs from Warcraft 3. <laughs> look, look, looks at like it. <laughs> and it's not quite correct. I'm pretty sure it's Lokrigar Ogar. But anyway, <laughs> that's how nerdy I am. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I find out that it's actually it's the the Warcraft 3 thing is a joke and it's actually you know based on something else Surrender! If you feel like it, you should be able to completely uh, encircle the other camp and surrender them. Yeah. Let's just start by dealing with these two tanks. Decided to get a bit aggressive in my territory here. I'll uh, I'll pin them in and make them surrender next turn. Oh, I rolled high there. In case people are wondering why I strat bombed them, uh, strat bombing actually kills movement hilariously. So they can't. They now cannot move. It's uh, it's a, it's an overlooked trick in Panzer Corps Two. The strat bombers actually destroy movement. And reduce ammunition. Especially the uh, later versions that you get, uh, 43, 44, when they hit um, like an artillery gun, that artillery gun or uh, anti-air gun or whatever is mostly, most, uh, most of the times left with just one ammunition. Depends on the uh, stars the bomber has a little bit. Man, I keep rolling high. Can a guy get his greed on? Okay, looking good. Plenty of time. I'm just going to reinforce my recon because it's a little bit of a soft unit to be left not at full health. Yep, for those those just joining us, this is the uh, Panzer Corps 1 Grand Campaign for Panzer Corps 2, and I I have, uh, how would you like to refer to yourself, the lead the lead developer of this mod? <laughs> I have no idea, I'm just the one doing, doing it at the moment. <laughs> we used to be three people, but the two others uh, moved away and uh, are now working on another mod. Um, we are still talking to each other, and there's no, no... Uh, bad blood or something, um, they just wanted to do something else and I uh, stuck with the mod and uh, when someone needs help, we always help um, 
each other. Like uh, Rick helped me do some uh, maps in the uh, 1943 fictional because uh, doing maps is like the thing I don't like about modding. Now the strat bombers are going to make themselves worth worthy. Yeah, when you hit in circle and then you can use the strat bombers to put some more dents into them. Before they were just farming EXP, but now they're actually putting the hurt on. Yeah, from what I've seen in the forums, the Strat Bombers is one of the underrated unit types. Or underused unit types. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate actually. It's uh... I rate them pretty highly, and everyone's off people are often surprised when I do. Yeah, the suppression is, is uh, underestimated a lot. It's, uh, a unit with suppression is higher defended than a unit without suppression. One strat bomb by bombing over it and doing some uh, um, suppression on the unit is very effective, and re Reducing entrenchment at the same time, especially the, the uh, later strategic bombers do a lot of damage to um, entrenchment. Yeah, but the issue is, is if you don't if you don't start with strat bombers early, then you They're won't have any yeah. experienced ones in the late game, and so they'll never be that useful. So that's that's how people work themselves into the position of never having a good strat bomber. I... 39 is um, a strategic hero for the first time in the game. Oh, and the the, uh, the recon version of um, Boodle that um, arrives early 39 has um, is a strategic bomber only hero. I mean, the true power of strat bombers is when you get a lethal hero on a really highly rated one. Yeah, then it becomes a, a tactical bomber with extreme range. and uh, <laughs> It just becomes a complete death. monster. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's one of the game mechanic breaking heroes. Because the funny part is, is that... Uh, so, tactical bombers are very good but they're short range and vulnerable and strategic bombers early on they seem not very good but they're long range and they're hard to shoot down but when you have a, a highly experienced strategic bomber and you add lethal to it 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 just becomes a unit murdering monster it makes tacticals look bad Six or seven, what? Lethal. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a hero clustering is a, a thing. I think it's because the uh, the way that random is uh, generated in the game, you always get hero clusters. That, that's very annoying. It's not when you're getting multiple copies of lethal. <laughs> It, it depends. I have one playthrough where I have eight un. Uh, how's that? Un, unreal. The one where you do not take suppression. Oh. Um, un, unrelenting or something? No, like no that? surrender. No, uh, not no surrender. Um, it might be unrelenting, actually. Un, unrelent, something like that. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Unyielding. Unyielding, exactly. Thank you. Uh, 
and that's uh, another reason why I wanted to do this script to um, remove this hero clustering effect. And we are currently debating um, if I will expand it so that you have um, a maximum of each hero you can get per campaign. Like um, on, in the first campaign, you can't get more than two heroes of the same type or something like that. Current discussion, current thing I'm, I'm thinking about doing. I just don't want to make the script too long because I um, was not able to get into the uh, Lua libraries of the game. So I have to add it to every single scenario by, by hand. I see. Yeah, um... Yeah, it's 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 uh it's one of those, isn't it? It's um when it goes in your favor it's great, when it doesn't go in your favor it's horrible. Yeah, exactly. When you get like uh, uh, first aid, first aid, first aid, first aid, it's about uh, no, I'm no longer going to play this and do over. <laughs> oh, you're wrong. First aid's one of my favorite heroes. <laughs> <laughs> um first aid's good because um and re uh repair the repair hero is good because when you've got limited stock those repairs are free. Yes, but they don't, they don't cost any. They don't. There cost are anything. a lot of heroes I would rather use than those. What than first aid? If I have a free slot on an infantry unit, I put that first aid hero there. Sure, but uh, there are a lot of other heroes that I would rather do there on on an, an infantry. Depends on on what map and. It's a good hero, yes, but having. Nine or ten of it is just not worth it. Well, no, obviously not. And that's why I want want uh, to do that uh, script. So you have a variety of heroes, variations, and not have like the same hero over and over and over. And from what I've uh, read so far on the forums, it's not just me. This seems to be a general issue. Gimme, gimme, gimme. I don't think I have quite enough units here for encirclement. I should have taken some encirclement heroes. You always start a campaign by just stealing everything that's not nailed down. Actually, I usually don't. I play 9 out of 10 times with Ruthless from the beginning. Oh, interesting choice. Any reason, particular reason why? Uh, yes, because currently um, in the game it's more or less worthless after maybe a campaign or two. You just swim in prestige and you don't know where to uh, go with it. After the... Um, it was AO42, I think, where you had to capture like 100 KV once. Um, I had like 150,000 prestige, and prestige became completely meaningless for the rest of the game. <laughs> yes, I've reached that and, point too. <laughs> and, uh, that's where, where I started to just play ruthless whenever I, I do something to just get rid of this uh, mechanic. Just when I capture something, I can keep it and get the prestige, and that's too much. I would prefer to have it either I keep it or I sell it for prestige. That would be uh, a better, um, I think. And um, the uh, the hero generation script is going to work against this uh, meaninglessness of prestige a bit by uh, giving a cost to the hero. You have to pay at least 1000 prestige or you will not get the hero outside of the heroes that are uh, come with uh, special scripts where you pay accommodation points or something like that. Mm. Are you not worried that uh, having to buy heroes makes prestige even more valuable and therefore people are even going to farm even more? Yeah, yeah, they can do that. They will not be able to farm that much prestige to buy only the strongest heroes all the time. That is... Uh, it's uh, the, the 5,000. Challenge accepted. <laughs> it's like uh, on on a on a fifteen map. Let's say you, you can get twelve heroes and uh, three heroes come for free. 
Well, that's like 60,000 prestige per campaign. Do a lot of capture. Farm, farm, farm. <laughs> yeah. But I haven't even got any capture. I could be I could have like 5,000 prestige by now if I had capture capture heroes. Uh you know, like salvager and uh, uh and trophies. Flexible command is always a nice one. Makes surrounding easier. Yes, the power four, basically. You know what the power four is? I coined the term. It's uh, it's four particular heroes that uh, four particular traits that let you capture really easily. Yeah, that's the. Uh, I rarely use them. I feel like there's like one that gives you double. But I think the. Um, Scavenger abuse has been fixed with one of the last patches, where you can put, uh, get eight times the uh, the amount and the the items that no longer works. And flexible command, one that I would take. And uh. there's uh, one where the um, encircled units take more debuff per turn. That's only three. Don't know what the fourth would be. Uh, the power four are perimeter control, flexible command. Um, Trophies of war is the third. No, 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 no. Oh, perimeter is perimeter control, flexible command, deadly grasp. And um, Master of Blitzkrieg. Why perimeter control? Uh, perimeter control allows you to supply units that are in enemy zones of control. So when you when you put your units in a long chain in a long ah, snake, so your own they're units all supplied. That that ah your own units that go in okay i i see the, it it absolutely prevents you from encircling yourself effectively deadly grasp means that you do four suppression damage instead of two which renders surrounded units impotent at lightning speed i mean they're basically impotent on the first turn that you encircle them and uh obviously flexible command are used to uh pad out parts of your encirclement so that you can prevent enemy units from moving and uh master blitzkrieg lets you go over rivers more, more very tank easy, units easy, and easily with tanks rivers, yeah. and tanks move quicker so it's easier to encircle with them they all cost one point each and they're weak on their own but together they are a terrifying combination Farm, 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 farm. Oh, that was a long time ago, James. That's a lot of dudes. And remember, I told you that um, every anti-tank gun with less than four centimeters has camouflage. You remember? Okay. Yes. This this is a recon car. <laughs> last just time, a I... little, just a little hint. <laughs> last, last time I checked, recon cars reveal the uh, reveal camouflaged units, so I'm, I should be they, good. They still do. They still do. <laughs> I thought for a second there you were like, yeah, recon cars no longer reveal them, and I'm like, what? <laughs> no no that would be no no <laughs> not not that cruel 
No, it's like the the um, all the those very small anti tank guns have like no use really. And that's the, the first go at trying to give them something. It's funny actually because uh, Danzing Losington said nothing beats the Ju eighty seven. And let me tell you, strategic bombers with lethal beat the Ju eighty seven. <laughs> yep. I don't think you realize how disgustingly powerful a good strategic bomber is with lethal. Uh, same goes for the 21 centimeter with lethal. Okay. I'm just now. thinking if I'm going to restrict overrun heroes to certain unit types. Oh, overrun on everything! Overrun artillery! Woo! <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, overrun, overthrengs, twenty-one centimeter with lethal. No way. Uh, no, uh, Geronimus. Even against a hard target, a strategic bomber with lethal will do more damage than any dive bomber because they no longer do any um, suppression damage. All the suppression damage is diverted to direct damage, and you can ev you can take out tanks with it. That's a very annoying thing. Yeah, the long story short is... Um, strategic bombers have very high attack values, and as the war goes on, um, they just get off the charts enormous. Just like 21 centimeter guns. If in, if anything, they, they become worse. So, <clears throat> you might have a strategic bomber with like 30 soft attack and 26 hard attack. Um, whereas your dive bomber might only have, say, I don't know, 14 in both categories or 16 in both 16 categories. 16 is the highest hard attack on the dive bombers. See, there we go. I know my stuff. <laughs> and um, so I did this video called The Rule of Ten about how the stats work. But basically, the long story short is if you have more, if you have 10 more attack than the enemy has defense, then you're going to do 100% kills. And then you lose 10% for each number you're below. So this is a rough figure, of course, but it's an easy rule. It's easy to memorize. Um. So the thing about the dive bombers is, as the war goes on, the top armor on tanks reaches something like 6 or 8 or 10. And so, by the rule of 10, they can only do about 60% damage or 50% damage because, uh, because they haven't got more than 10 attack over the top of the defense of the unit. I think early on tanks have got like basically no top armor. Yeah, zero. So it's fine. So so dive bombers absolutely massacre them because they've got no top armor at all. But as the, as the war goes on, tanks gain some top armor and it starts to eat into this 10 advantage. Now strat bombers... Strat bombers always win on the rule of 10 because they always have 10 more than the target. So in theory, they should be 100% lethal. But they have this horrible trait, uh, suppressive damage trait, which means that they only do 20% of their damage, of their attacks are lethal attacks, and 80% are suppressive. So, if you've got a 10 strength bomber, it's gonna, it can only do up to 2 lethal and 8 suppression. What lethal does is it adds another 50% lethal to that ratio. So it takes you from 20% to 70%. Now suddenly, um, since they always win out on the rule of 10, they can do 7 kills. Like 10 strategic bombers can get 7 kills, up to 7 kills very easily. So that is more than the dive bomber can get uh, once that top armor starts to get, starts to get heavier and heavier. Um, so in the late mid to late war, strategic bombers become incredibly deadly if you have uh, lethal on them Whoa, full explanation 
and you need stars. Yes, because stars... So this is where they get even worse. Stars uh, add additional lethality to a unit. All units actually do a little... have a, a suppression buffer. I think it's something like 25%. And every star eats away at that buffer, I think, by 5%. I'm not 100% on this, but I think that's the case. So five-star units are, like, more lethal than than zero star not just because of the accurate accuracy increase but because that suppressive buffer has been eaten away at and that affects strategic bombers as well so strategic bombers actually can become even more lethal um so yeah the the bottom line is you need to invest in strategic bombers early even though they suck early because in the late war they become absolutely terrifying i tend to use the those 17 as a recon plane. <laughs> yes, a recon plane that can drop ineffective bombs. Exactly. <laughs> and in uh, the 39 part, um, first uh, scenario, you uh, get the, um, the recon rudel. Uh, that was as well. And he comes with a door 17 that is uh, unique uh, to the game. That is a strategic recon plane. You know, for a second there, my mind was like, the noodle 17? What? <laughs> 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 the, the <laughs> I no. don't know why, but my brain was like, the Noodle 17? I'm like, what? <laughs> no, I must have misheard that. Yep, you did. Do 17 and Rudel, uh, the uh, German pilot. Pretty sure that everyone uh, watching this knows which Rudel we are talking about. Uh, I should probably reinforce this. 10 strength is not good. Reminds me of, um, there's a, there's a nickname for snakes. Uh, call them danger noodles. Okay. Ju, Ju one eight eight A has nine hard attack versus Ju eighty seven G's fifteen hard attack. Uh, that's that's very early war though, isn't it? Uh, the one eighty eight A is the last strategic bomber you get, but it's not the best. Wait, what year though? That that's nine heart attack is absolutely nothing. I, strategic bombers have got like twenty plus towards the end. In soft attack, not in heart attack. I'll take a look. That bunker actually is, is a problem. That's the reason why it's there. <laughs> it's to be a problem.
hurting. Sorry? I, I said, yeah, that head of yours really must be hurting. <laughs> you placed the recon plane above the bunker after shelling it with the, <laughs> with the artillery. Oh, yes, because um, it doesn't really, yeah, it doesn't really make, it doesn't really make much difference to, uh, to the artillery strikes, but it potentially makes a big difference for the infantry attack. But yeah, I could have moved it first. Uh, the, the big difference is the uh, infantry, the, the um, experience bar. Yes, I don't normally use, uh, I don't normally use recon planes for, for this kind of thing. Like recons are like super easy to get experience on. It's, uh, I usually have like four to five uh, recon cars in, in backup uh, that just have experience and then switch them to a tank, to an anti-tank gun or whatever. They get experience that really, really fast. I don't get attached to my recons, that's the thing. Oh, they die. If they die, they die. He's in a he's in a pin so he can't do anything. Oh, I just forgot how unbelievably slow heavy infantry is. I should have given them transports. Uh, I usually don't use them unless it's in uh, defensive um, scenarios where I don't have to move much. Yeah, but since you modded them, I just thought I might play with them. So I think until uh, 9040, I use mostly cavalry infantry. Wow, I still managed to do one damage. Despite the intense suppression I inflicted upon them. One infantry unit shooting kills one artillery. I think they have zero defense. It's the only one. Not quite close enough yet. they would move if I attacked them. I don't want them to move, I want them to surrender for that juicy prestige, so... Take your time, I can't see the, the, the turns, but I'm pretty sure you have enough. Oh yeah, I got loads of time. I got like... Um, another 11 turns to go. <laughs> loads of time. You only need to capture the... Uh, 
Dun, 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 dun. Show me the money. Okay, let me think about how I'm going to do this. Because, of course, they've got a supply hex here, haven't they? So. I told you once it is easy, then you need to go play something else. It's, uh... Sorry? <laughs> if you want something easy, you need to play something else, I said. <laughs> Listen to this disrespect. You're welcome to show me and play my campaign on the highest difficulty settings and uh, whatever. This uh, preludes campaign I had to tune down two times already due to player feedback because it was uh, too difficult for the majority of the players to play it. Like especially the last mission. I don't think that we are going to get to that one today. Um. Yeah, it seems all right to me. But then again, I mean. I'm considered by most people to be a very good player, so... You're still in the extremely easy part. It's uh, in the last mission, you need to cross a big body of water. Uh, you have to um, move your forces onto an island, and then from that island back onto uh, a different main body. And a lot of people struggle with that. It's mostly, I think, because there's um, several mechanics in the game that are not used very often. Like the um, how you work the supply on an island with the, uh, the harbors and the supply hexes and stuff like that. So on an island, there is the border of the map will not provide any supply to you, like it usually does. That's where a lot of people struggle with it. But I have several times some island maps in, in the uh, campaign, especially in the um, Africa Core campaign. And then it's important that people know how to work with it. That's why I decided to I see. Eight should become available. Yeah, and it would be a good idea to buy one. Then I can uh, show you what I did to it. It's um, a very new, unique unit now, and I think it now has the the position it deserves to have. It was like the, the I don't know, man. It's a done. it's a very deadly <laughs> in the in the base game. It's super dangerous. Um, you can uh, switch it from. And in air, anti tank, and then you can switch it to artillery mode, and then back to anti air mode. So you have an additional uh, artillery mode in the um, 88. Huh. The only bad part about it is the um, all the animations for the artillery mode of the 88 are in the game, except the animations needed to go into a transport and out of a transport. That's why the, the um, transportation movement with the 88 is a bit different. Maybe you could call it broken. That's nothing that I can fix. I asked the development team to help me um, or do something about it. I have not gotten an answer about that yet. Yeah, it's a little bit niche. Yeah, it's a, there's just something missing 
in the uh, uh, in in the code that needs to be put in so the mechanic uh, works. And it, it just uh, it, from from uh, what I can see, they started working on an artillery mode of the 88 and abandoned it mid mid game for whatever reason. And if whoever started that would finish it, it worked perfectly fine. Um. If you push that infantry out, exactly. What do you think I'm doing, man? <laughs> if you capture that hack session, you completely surround it. more roughly that's uh, mostly because of the uh, redoing of 9039 the, um, the maps when you import them from Panzer Corps 1 to Panzer Corps 2 they get tilted by 90 degrees to the right so north would be to the right and stuff like that and that was uh, very annoying so I decided to read the maps and while I'm at it I decided to make them bigger like four times bigger than they um, have been so far um, give them the right orientation and it, by doing that, the uh, airfields are too far apart for the plane movement, so every plane got more movement than the, the other airfields. You know, um, this is something that people don't actually think about, but um, you actually get a fairly large amount of EXP for losing units. Yes, you do. It's, uh... Uh, when I first played Pentacore 2, I actually ran the wire on my prestige, and what I mean by that is I... I fought in such a way that my army was always full strength, and I had, like, a couple of thousand prestige spare. But no more than that. I would then deliberately, you know, take bad attacks and, and reinforce them to level up low-level units. Learns from mistakes. Underrated unit. And uh, underrated hero. Um, but, then I, but then I found out about the 10,000 prestige gate that puts you on the alternative history path and I got really mad. <laughs> <laughs> Super mad. Uh. A hint would have been... Yeah, because you know, in strategy games, we've got this concept of float. Have you heard the term before? Mm -hmm. um, so just to explain to the audience who may not know, float is this idea that if you're holding money, it's not doing anything for you. This is, this is called floating money. Um, you want to be using all of your resources all the time. And, uh, you know, having a large bank is has it has no value past a certain point um so a lot of top players they play in such a way to find some niche util utilization for resources that they're floating even if it's marginal and uh grinding units was was a way of using those resources to get something um and then yeah you found out that's not what <laughs> that's not what the developer wanted you to do so uh oops <laughs> back to the beginning. Not back to the beginning, but uh... you play the uh, the historical path first, and the for the next playthrough where you go a historical, you know what to do. Just involved some serious grinding to uh, to recover the situation. Okay, that's that guy sufficiently softened. A 
I want your clothes, your boots, and your rifle. <laughs> Sorry? I usually have one spare pause slot just for things like that so I can do less damage. Yeah, it wouldn't help me on like this mission though because having, the. Having a unit and then do less damage. Yeah, the extra core unit. The extra core unit that you receive as a present would occupy that slot, right? That's why I'm three over. Yeah, that's something I might uh, redo on my uh, next person playthrough that I. Uh, come onto the map that are enhanced the core slots so that when you reserve some core slots that is not going to break your your play style that's the one feedback i received i think several weeks ago that's actually very easy to do it just needs to be done sorry i have uh, several things now that i want to implement to the whole mod and when i have like three to four things that i want to add like, just go from the beginning and add them. Like when the, um, the discussion about the hero generation script is over and there has been some kind of consensus, uh, that will end the game. The I know, system. I know what it will do. <laughs> so, <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I'm like hesitating? <laughs> I know. I like my, this is my precious prestige that I can have here, but I need to do something clever. I'm very sure that the infantry unit will move into the city when you attack it, no matter what. It's not any better. Ah, <laughs> oh. might have used up its movement points. Not sure. Ping pong. Yay, I got one. It's a moral victory. <laughs> it's a moral victory. Okay, next map is the first map where stuff gets a little more serious. You will have a real enemy that's going to fight back and not just stand around. And at the beginning, you will get your first special hero. Ah, yeah, move to reserve hex. Yeah, well, that's cool. Do your, your, your new hero first. Why would you reject the assignment? You can if you choose to, but uh, I wouldn't. No, but I'm saying why Why would you reject? Is there any reason to? Uh, there's people who don't want um, overrun on their infantries, or don't want to use overrun heroes, or whatever. It's, it's just an option you can do. <laughs> Portrait! Yeah, it's oh. uh, from, from a TV series. Yes. That I watched when I was little. <laughs> oh. This and is a uh, British comedy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is, this hurts me in my soul. <laughs> As uh, a British person, it hurts me in my soul. Reason why I created this uh, hero when I, I created this this mod, I um, was thinking about how to deal with overrun on infantry, because um, at that point you still could um, train a steamroller to a unit and then move the overrun hero to another unit. 
Yes, that was my and, that was my favorite party trick. Yeah, and that was uh, um, removed from the game. And before it was removed, I created this hero, so I don't have to deal with the problem that some people get an overrun hero very early and some people don't. And that way I could make sure everyone has an overrun hero for his infantry units early on and I don't have to deal with uh, extreme um, problems with the... Um, yeah, because the someone who got an overrun thing. hero early could potentially have a core where everyone's got overrun, and exactly. which you have to balance yeah. against. And then exactly. someone else will be in a position where they don't have that at all. And it, do, it Steamroller makes a huge difference. Yeah, especially in the way it works now. I hope they're going to fix Steamroller because uh, currently uh, Steamroller is broken. You don't take damage when you Steamroll something. Yes, but yeah, that's correct. If, if, the, if the attack is not supported by any enemy and your damage is enough to kill them they they don't get to retaliate it it drops their retaliate phase yeah exactly if they're supported in any way like if there's an artillery there even if it doesn't do anything as long as it shoots or an anti-tank gun or something shoots at you um then the unit that you're attacking does get to retaliate but no nope. other than that circumstance uh that's only true for overrun not for steamroller, steamroller no 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 it's true it's true for steamroller as well but it does no. have to do one point of... I think it has to do at least one point of suppression. That's the only situation where a steamroller does not that results in you taking damage. Um, uh, you take the damage from the, um, from the uh, supporting unit, but you don't take any damage from the unit that you steamroll. Uh, you, you do. Can... You do. No, no, you don't. <laughs> I'm 100% sure we can do okay. any bet you want. <laughs> All right, but, fair, fair enough. But that doesn't doesn't really matter. It's 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 broken and it needs to be fixed. Um, you have um, 88. Um, yeah, I've got it uh, selected. Uh, just just buy one and uh, you can uh, when you uh, have it on the map on the first turn we can uh, show how it works. Um, every sure fighter how it works plane. Now. See. Yeah, the the the, the movement problematic can't be shown here. The movement yeah. problematic. Yeah, when you have it in, um, like, we put it on the map, and then you will. Uh, it's you, in, you it's in artillery mode now. Yeah, exactly. When it is in artillery mode, you can't really use its transport. You have to use the transport manually, or it will not work. Oh, I see. Because the animation of the unit moving into the transport and out of the transport is uh, missing in that script. And if that would be put in by the developer, it would work perfectly fine. But no response yet. Um, every fighter plane has um, uh, um, a special air mode where it can no longer attack ground targets but loses the uh, ground attack uh, trait that makes it vulnerable to uh, low caliber guns. Ah, okay. So when you um, fly with your fighter plane somewhere um, to shoot down another plane, the um, small caliber anti-air guns will not have an advantage on you. That's uh, exactly that's the switch. You switch it to another fighter plane, and you just lose the low altitude trade. So why would you not toggle this in case you want to shoot when, ground? When when you want to shoot ground targets, you have to activate it. Un unless you shooting ground targets, you have that one off. That's like I do it. The, um, uh -huh. the BF one hundred and ten um, has um, the night fighter mode. It uh, turns itself into um, a fighter plane with uh, hit and run. The um, yeah, exactly. The the one hundred and ten C. Just grab one, and then then you can. Uh, you need to have it in, in, in yeah, exactly. That uh, turns into a fighter, gets hit and run. The um, they have um, one. Um, how's that called in, in English? Initiative? Exactly. Yeah, they yeah. have one, one initiative, therefore they will always shoot faster than strategic bombers. And that's what the uh, night fighters uh, in World War II did. They were specifically built to uh, kill enemy strategic bombers. They have an advantage over them, but any enemy fighter will easily kill them still. Cool. Um, should I just load up a, 
oh no, can I can I load up a later part of the campaign to show some of the other units? Are there any other big changes that you want to talk about in the time we have remaining, which is not a huge amount? Uh, we should talk about the uh, the move to reserve hex, which is at the top screen of the map. Yes, so here's that... the remove the move to reserve hex. Exactly. Um, during the campaign, you can move any unit there, and it will be put into your reserve. So once you have air superiority, you can bench all your fighters and put up more bombers, or bring home your anti-air guns and bring something else for your core slots. Or a unit that is completely battered can be brought back into reserve, repaired, and then be put back on the map in full strength instead of staying around for three or four rounds to be completely repaired. So if you don't want to pay the price of repairing something in the field, you can reserve it and bring out another unit. To... Exactly, you can do that too, yeah. Like have uh, reserves brought into place and move home the, the other units. And then repair them in the uh, next deployment phase. Cool. That's like uh, something that I've seen in, in every uh, uh, tactical uh, level game so far, but sadly this was not possible to do until the patch that came with AO44. I haven't actually gotten any uh, any normal heroes so far. Yeah, you don't. Ah. You get them like once every so many missions? or you, No, no, no. Um, you should have gotten a normal hero during the last mission, but the script did not fire, you remember? Yes, yes, now I remember that. But there's not one for this mission. You got Schulz. You either get Schul uh, you either get a special hero or some random whatever hero. Oh, so if I'd have said no to the special guy, I would have gotten a different hero. At the moment, not. But that is going to be like this. Yes. That's like something that's uh, still in, in development. I always use the uh, preludes campaign for testing issues when I want to see how people look what I can do. Tell me your opinions. Do you like that or don't? Like um, we had um, a limited stock feature in the preludes for four or, four or five years um, where you had limited ammunition, limited elite replacements, um, a set limited stock of units that you could modify with the limited stock feature of the game. Yep. Um, people liked it very much, and I'm going to implement it into the whole campaign bit by bit. Uh, it takes some time, because uh, every scenario has to be done by hand, one by one. <clears throat> it uh, it makes me happy to hear that people are enjoying limited stock, because that was... It's a lot... That, that, was, my, that was my uh, that was my baby, <laughs> so... <laughs> I think uh, uh, Limited Sock first came up during Panzer Corps 1 like 15 years ago or something like that. I uh, I uh, wrote the... I went to... I actually went to the developer directly about Limited Stock and said yeah. this would be, you know, a lot of what people are complaining about, i.e. upgrading all of their units to the very best ones at every opportunity, would be solved by, you know... The, the system where you have where you capture units and you have a limited amount of them is a really good system and it would be great if you just applied that to everything and uh, he went for it and uh, and here we are and now now you just need to make him uh, implement the uh, wonder <laughs> factor <laughs> yeah I don't know I think I've used I've used all of my uh... influence all your all, stuff all, yeah all my influence <laughs> has, has been utilized unfortunately so okay um okay right uh so i guess let's demonstrate the reserve thing does it just go straight away uh yeah you can, uh, is it turn one i can't see the turn yep it is turn one yep yep Choop. and there it is in the region and you can put it back on the map sadly you just use the 88 so we get show the movement <laughs> no that's can fine you... that's fine uh, we'll, we'll 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 leave the we'll, we'll we'll have some mystery. Why can't you put it back on the map? Is my question. You should be able to use the hex on the top left. Uh, probably because it's got no movement now, right? Ah, yeah, exactly. It has no movement. You probably have to to wait one turn. Yeah, for, that's the, for the movement. 
So that w- that will be why. But uh, yeah, working as working as intended. So that's quite a cool uh, feature. If you have undo, get it back. You're really keen to show off this bug, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you go to artillery. Yeah, now you, you see you have all the movement patterns. Now click on on. Uh, you see nothing happening. If you want to move it there, you have to manually put it into the. Uh, and then you can move, but it's not going to come out. It Which is just like Panzer Corps One. Yeah, nostalgia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bringing nostalgia uh, back. Looks looks like all the animations were taken from there, and that is just missing. But it has a three-range artillery mode now, and uh, soft support. And like I said, you have a real enemy now. Oh, it, can't, um, huh? it can't shoot after moving. It was in AA mode. And now it should be able to shoot. There we go. Now you can shoot. It's like the, the only unit that has three possible stage states or whatever. Um, other unit changes that might be interesting is the uh, Stuck 3B got an anti-tank mode. That is one thing a lot of people ask for. Um, okay. Most, most battleships have an anti-air mode. That is um, when you um, have the mod active and play the AO campaign that has any ships on it is very surprising and damaging to your air force. So I do not recommend to have the mod active when you go into any maps that have uh, ships on it other than the maps that come with the mod. Okay, all right, so that is it for now. We are actually all out of time. Um, but I hope you guys will take the opportunity to uh, to download and play this. It seems really cool and well thought out. Between this and Storm Over Europe, I obviously got a lot on my plate for things to do. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's... Uh, um, I've also, you know, there's also 1945, right? So... I think I'll finish. I think I'll finish my 1945 campaign, and then I'll get into mods. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I will drop uh, the links to the mod. It's on the Steam Workshop, but I'll I'll drop a link to. Do you have like a forum thread on the Matrix forums for it? Yep. Yeah. I'll drop a link for that there, and potentially your Discord as well, if you want that, and so on. Um, I'll I'll talk to Grondel about the best ways to uh, get you guys involved in this, but. Um, it's so easy to install. It's so easy to activate. There's really no reason to not give it a go. And especially, you know, those of you who have just bought the base game, the base game is quite cheap, Panzer Corps 2, and you haven't bought the uh, the Axis operations. Maybe that's uh, that doesn't fully interest you or whatever. I mean, this is a whole, you know, slew of handcrafted content that you can play for free. And free is my favorite price. <laughs> it's like 120 scenarios at the moment. 120 scenarios! Wow. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Right, it's been a pleasure. Any final shout outs for you, Grondel? Oh, uh, no. Easiest way to get it is just go Steam, look for the Pencil One We Make mod, and hit subscribe, and you're done. Okay, any final questions from the chat? We've got 105 people watching right now, so maybe there'll be a couple of questions. And no one's talking to us. That's <laughs> fine. I was watching the chat the whole time, but uh, I think I killed half the chat with with math. <laughs> they all went to sleep. They were all like, they, I was like, so, you know, the differential between the attack and the defense is a percentage of kills suppression, there's uh, dilithium crystals, and they were like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, never mind. All right, cool. Then that is it from us for now. We will see you guys uh, next time for what is your mod. 
Thanks for watching. Thanks for having me.